Hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a Purge coaching video of a replay. I'm gonna get start uh, get started with this. It's gonna be doing a Queen of Pain game. This is a game submitted by a guy tagged RF. His MMR is 3823 solo, and he played a Queen of Pain game, and he won some tips. He went mid, and all right, I'll just read it in his perspective. Oh. I went mid and felt like I dominated That's my lane against good. a very weak mid hero in AA. I was able to farm a lot this game, but did overextend a lot in the mid game when team fighting. I went for more of a carry build with Orchid, BKB, AC, and Necro 3 in that order. I pushed lanes a lot in the late game and did well in fights with BKB. My Steam name is RF. Okay, so you mostly just said things you did well, and you did have a very good KD at the end of the game, but we're going to be trying to look for your issues and see if there are any there. So I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, so I haven't made a video in a couple days been kind of busy with stuff um i just uploaded a gem td video if you guys play that custom game you can check it out if you guys want to try playing gem td i think it's pretty fun and addicting check it out uh, might upload more in the future because I, I play like a game or two a day with wolfman so now queen of pain this game we're against tusk axe sniper ancient apparition quell's pretty good against sniper because you can close the gap which is a thing that sniper counters um pretty good against ancient apparition Against Tusk, I would say it's okay. Uh, you can also blink out of Ice Shards, so him chasing you like that is not that big of a deal. And Axe as a whole is also, he's going to have a lot of trouble getting kills on you as well. So I'm just going to speed this up until we get into the game. Shaker. Take a look at your starting items. Prepare okay, let's slow battle. down. Alright, so. So you went for a Null Talisman first with a Tango. Pretty standard build by all means. Um, gives you really good right-click damage. It gives you a Tango of its own. Or you get a Tango of your own, so you're getting free regen. I think that's completely fine. Totally standard Quap build. To Looks like we got some VCs. Nothing really to talk about here. Uh, if we take a look at the Ancient Apparition, God, did he really go mid? I th it looks like what happened was they didn't really have a mid hero, so A is like, I guess I'll go mid, but he already bought support items, so you're already in a giant advantage in the mid lane because of this, because AA's base damage is decent but not amazing. He also, in my opinion, grabbed the wrong skill for that. Looks like you're able to get a bounty rune just fine, get in the mid lane, and now we start the lanian stage. So, thus far, you have hit every last hit that is available to you. What were those? Oh, that looks really weird. Is that new? Is that a new thing? So it looks like the support AA shifted the mid lane. Uh, one, all right, one pretty big mistake here is that you skilled two skills before you even had danger. I think this is completely dangerous to do. You should always have at least one skill point sitting until you use it, basically. Because right now, you just took like 150 magic damage when you could have just blinked to here. You could have just blinked to there and taken no damage and had your blink on cooldown. Or if you get ganked, you really need to have blink and you don't have that. It's a pretty big mistake. You're doing really good on last city and you missed one there, but I think you're doing fine. But the skill build alone is, is a mistake. If you're using dagger, then use dagger. But if you don't use dagger, you shouldn't skill it. I don't think it's worth it. The fact that you skilled Scream of Pain without having blink is really scary. Other times you can trick your opponents, by the way, by holding your points and then using as needed. For example, um, you could not skill blink and then go to Scream and one dagger and kill somebody that don't expect it, for example. Those are all options that you can do. I think your lane control has been relatively fine. You're not really pushing too hard. That scream was all right, but I think you really needed to get this melee creep as well. I, I personally don't like doing level one nukes to get double last hits like that, because most of the time you're gonna miss. And this is another issue with you not having Shadow Strike. And to be honest, you should be using Shadow Strike on this guy. You should recognize instantly he's only got one tango. He's an ancient apparition. Like for example, right now he has no mana. If you just run at him and you dagger him, he gets really hurt. And right here, I wouldn't have used uh, Scream of Pain as well. Well, I guess if you get the kill, it's worth it, huh? You also cancel one of your auto attacks. This is poorly done. You really didn't need to die here. Let's look at how that went over again. So, playing in the mid lane, you're level 3. You only have one level of Scream of Pain. It only does 85 damage, so it's pretty weak by itself. And this whole time, you could have pressured forward with a Shadow Strike. He's got no mana. Instead, you didn't actually do this until he popped a Clarity Potion. And yeah, you get a Clarity Potion, but you should recognize right now that he's weak, right? You get Blink here. You could have gone right here and initiated on him. Or you could have walked to the low ground, attacked. Well, I guess it's hard to attack because you don't have high ground vision. Like, once you went, it was good, I guess. But I think you canceled one auto attack as well. Yeah, right there. That was a huge mistake. That caused you to die, actually. If you went to cancel that auto attack, you would be alive. So that was a pretty big mistake. 
With that said, you did buy a bottle before you died, which is good, I guess. It's like you blink forward. You should basically, in my opinion, just be spamming daggers on this guy. Because he doesn't have a bottle. He opted for boots, so he's also limited on that. You should just approach him, throw a dagger, and then when he cold feeds you, you blink away. Just like this, basically. But this is kind of late. It's already three minutes into the game, and I feel like you could have pressured a lot more with that. You're not really leveraging the abusiveness that is Quap. Your last hits are much better than the AAs are, and that's great. You're last hitting fine, but you're not quite leveraging your mana as good as you could, I think. Again, right now, approach forward, throw the dagger, back off. You have like four or five auto attacks this tower through before you could have thrown a dagger, and you should have thrown it at any of those points. And that's another 50 damage times... Uh, it's like 150 damage, basically. Uh, I think it does like 140 damage, level 1 Shadow Strike. And now you're trying to throw it again, but it's at a point where you're you're not necessarily with that same capability. So, like, when the creeps are under tower, you could just stand next to them and cast a spell, because it's not going to aggro. And you lost that opportunity. And this guy could be at a point where his HP is a little bit lower, which may allow you to kill at level 6. But because you barely lowered his HP, in fact, it's not lowered at all, your kill potential is the same. And you even blinked forward to do a Scream of Pain. That's not worth it at all. You just traded 400 HP to do 225 magic damage. Absolutely not worth it. So that was a huge that was a huge, huge mistake in terms of survivability. I also think it's a mistake to eat all of these trees because <clears throat> it's your safest place to juke. I think it's worth it most of the time to walk just an inch farther, eat this tree, eat maybe not this tree, but eat any of these trees, or you can go over here. I mean, you, you basically ate all the trees that allow you to juke, basically. So I guess in a way it makes it easier for supports to gank you if they come from this way because they can they can just run straight to you rather than hiding here and sneaking out. But I don't like eating all of these trees because this means that there's no juke possibility if you get dive. Now, that's not really something that's going to happen, I guess, with an A. So that's not something that I should really criticize. But I think it's something to keep in mind. I think he ate too many of those trees. And you've also been very inefficient with your mana so far. You need to harass more efficiently. You can't blink aggressively to throw a dagger because if you do that, he gets an entire cold feed on you. You also didn't push out the wave at an appropriate time. You should have been down here right at 4 minutes. If any of the players in this game were better, there's a freaking dual lane down here. One of these guys should have gotten this rune. So that was a really big mistake as well. Against better players, you easily would have gotten countered there and you would have had the rune. This should be a pretty easy kill. Nice fissure gank from Earthshaker. I like this. You pop the illusion rune. I actually really like illusion rune on Quap for that reason. Definitely micro these back and save them. You can send this illusion over to the large camp and stack this for you to the later farm. And we'll see if you do anything with it, but that's really what you should be doing with it. Instead, you're keeping it on the mid lane. I don't really like that. Dagger on this guy is good because he has Tranquil Boots and you auto-attacked him, so it actually will hurt him a little bit. Top is under attack. That's completely fine. Back off a little bit. So it would have been an okay time to Bottle Crow. You could have potentially foreseen that. But it looks like this guy needs his Ring of Regen, which makes sense. You also pick up a robe of the Magi, which is surely going to be for power treads. Your last hits are starting to get a little low. 21 last hits at 5 minutes is 5.30 is definitely behind. I understand there's a lot of fighting going on, but the other thing is that you also died that one time. And not to mention that you've also... Um, you went to runes maybe not at the best times. So you might have missed some last hits in that way. And you also don't have a way to accelerate to catch up because you didn't stack. You used that illusion rune and accomplished nothing for you. This one you're actually going way too early. You should have probably waited for the next creep wave. You could have screamed this, attacked it once, and then ran top. Instead, you end up going after the axe, but he steals your rune, and you get nothing out of that. So let's take a look at that again, see, how, see what it's like when he approaches. So he's very low. You know, rather than ulting here, the better plan, I think, would have been a dagger scream. Definitely. Oh, and you messed up your scream. I see. Well, that's painful. No wonder he lived. That's a huge mistake. That was an absolute gimme. I can't believe he approached you like that. He even had vision of you too, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So that was a huge mistake, so you lost mana, you didn't get the rune, if you would have killed him you would have gotten the rune, you would have had a kill, you would have had mana, you would have had probably half mana. You've got a lot of int items now, this is obviously going to be for an orchid, but your mana pool overall is very low. So at this stage I guess you could just last hit for a bit, but it's kind of an issue if you run out of mana entirely, because now you also can't TP support your allies. And that's one thing that you're really messing up this game, is that we're six minutes into the game, you're level six, and you don't have a teleport scroll. You need to have a teleport scroll if you're playing mid and you're a hero like Queen of Pain. Because basically your initiation range is huge. It's a 1300 range, which is something like this. And then that's basically from a tower. So if you TP here, 
you can blink and you can instantly be here. You could basically, as soon as as soon as these heroes show, you could teleport to this lane and you could team fight. Obviously, you already used your ultimate, so you TPing at this point isn't really something you want to do. Plus, there's like tons of heroes and they're all pretty tanky, and there's an Omni Knight, so you're realistically not going to do anything there. But you should always have a TP. I think it's a complete waste to grip, bring a double robe of the Magi and not bring a TP scroll. Like the items that you get on a Queen of Pain or any hero that plays mid that can gank a little bit, you buy your boots, you buy your bottle, and then you basically say, I need to get a TP scroll. That is your next item. You don't get a robe of the Magi first, in my opinion. I think the TP scroll is just way too important. Obviously, you're out of mana now, but that's more of another issue. When you lost this rune, you maybe should have just gone back to heal or given your Earthshaker mid while you went back to heal, and then you could have potentially TP to a lane and then set up a gank or something. Now, that's a maybe a different playstyle on co-op than maybe you want to do a lot of co-ops, and especially you said this as well, you played more of a carry role on the mid lane, in which case you will normally farm more often, but... For example, Huskar got wrecked here, you weren't able to TP, you go back to heal now, which I think is good. But again, you upgraded your treads. You upgraded your treads, you still don't have a TP scroll, you could have TP'd to the mid lane, you could have TP'd to the bot lane. And instead you run all the way mid. And you're back to harassing. Like, if you're just going to play passively like this, you should have more last hits, honestly. Yeah, you got the one kill in the A, and that was good. But you should have more last hits. I guess you're getting to be okay now, 35 at about 8 minutes. You might be able to hit about 50 at 10 minutes. But for your MMR, you're doing well. You're doing well, but you're not doing amazing. The easiest way for you to get better is to just get amazing at last hitting. If you get amazing at last hitting, you will get your Orchid time timings even earlier. But you really need to carry a TP scroll. And honestly, I kind of recommend just carrying a magic stick as well. You don't have to make a full magic wand. I don't think that's needed. But look at this rotation. You, rotated, you walked all the way to the bot lane. And to make matters worse, you ran through the river. If you run to the river, if these guys had any observe wards on the map, here, 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 literally any observe ward would have seen you run this way. And then what would have happened? They just would have backed off and ran away. And look at these pings. They're like, ping the shit out of it. Guess who saw you? It was the ancient apparition. Because you ran the most obvious way ever. If you are going to go gank the bottom lane and you don't have a TP scroll, you shouldn't run through this path. This is one of the most, most warded paths. You should have ran this way. Walk this way, go down this way. Blah, 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 all the way over, la, 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 and then you gank. But you don't go this way. This one is always going to see you. If you run this way, the only way they see you is if they have a ward here or here. That's pretty much it. And more likely, they have a ward here or here or here. So that would have been safer. So we'll take a look at the uh, the A's vision. This is something that I didn't start doing until I played support a bit more. But I'm pretty sure he saw you. He's pinging, he's pinging. Yeah, he saw you right there. Boom. And that's because you ran this way. So now they're pinging like crazy. They're running all the way back. They do get a dunk off. And you're able to blink forward. And throw the crappiest ult I've ever seen. Sorry about that one. I mean, you do still end up... Oh! No, maybe? Okay, he does still end up dying. And it works out. But it was so dangerous. And this guy's gonna completely throw. And you wasted your ultimate. It's, it's definitely not easy ult to ult. Versus a snowball hero, but... You basically spend a lot of time rotating, rotating the bot lane where you easily could have TP'd, and now you're spending a lot of time running all the way to the mid lane. And yeah, you got a couple of last hits while you're there, but you could have gotten a lot more out of that. Basically, if you're playing a mid hero, you should not rotate unless you know you're going to get a kill. Is basically how it goes. Maybe not no, but very, very high chance of getting a kill. And your rotation could have been better though. Your CS is still ends up being pretty decent. But at this point, you're kind of relying on AoEs really to get those last hits, which is something... That's maybe bolstering your last hits in a way that looks better than it is. Like, I think you're pretty good at last hitting. I would say that you're last hitting somewhere comparable to where I would if I was playing mid, for example. Which is definitely better than your MMR. But but I think that your next mistake is that you're being inefficient with your time. You're being too inefficient with your time, definitely. You need to be a little bit better about that. So less time walking all the way to the bot lane, walking back to the mid lane. You should have TP'd back after you went to healed the first time. It would have cost you 75 gold, but you would have got a last hit out of it. You would have gotten some gold out of it, and it would have given you a bigger kill potential. Because then you would have been somewhere in a threatening position for more time. Radiance top tower is under attack. Also with the rune coming up, you definitely should have nuked this wave. Hit the range creep once. Hit the creep that's taking damage a couple times. Here, let me show you. Just Radiance to explain that for anybody that doesn't get it. Okay, so creep wave's coming up. 
Now, when this creep wave meets, this creep here is going to be taking all the damage, because he's the first one to get there, which means all of these creeps will aggro him first. With the exception of maybe this guy, by the time he gets over there, he may end up attacking this guy who's going to walk over here. So this guy's going to take the most damage, because he's being attacked by the range creep, and these two melee creeps are going to flood over him. This guy's going to take most of the damage. So to easily get two last hits without any chance of missing it, if you have a level 4 nuke on pretty much any hero, with the exception of like level 4 lightning on Leshrac right now, this is what you do with any AoE hero. You hit the range creep once, you wait until this creep gets below 300 damage, and then you scream a pain. And you instantly get two last hits without even having the last hit. All you do is attack the range creep once, because you have to get it below 300. Instead what you did is you came up and you last hit them. And you got it, and that's great. But right now, this creep wave could be down to two creeps. And then you could attack this like twice, like right there, get a last hit, and then shortly after, you would have gotten a last hit here. Boom. You could have this creep wave dead like right now, and you could be moving towards a rune spot. Instead, you sat here, and you chanced your ability to get a last hit by right-clicking. And again, the hardest time to get a last hit is in the early game. And, look at this, it's now 10.06, and you missed the range creep because you didn't nuke it. And now you're saying like, oh, I could use a rune. Well, what if you got a double damage, or what if you got a haste, or what if there's this regen down here and you see it? You see the regen. You could have gone to get it if you're more efficient with your time. And a regen is a really nice rune to have on Queen of Pain because you can jump in and gank. Or if you get ganked, you can blink out and regen. I would have gone on him right there. I think he could have died. If you check his mana as well, all he has mana for is a cold feet and an ice blast. It's a lot of damage, but I think his skill build is wrong. He needs at least one chilling touch. I guess without your ultimate, you maybe can't kill him, but... Like, it's 230 now, and you're just hitting the 50 CS mark, just getting a little bit over it. And I think you could have hit this easily one or two minutes ago if you're a little bit more efficient with your time. And again, what are you doing? You're backing up, you're expecting a gank, I'm guessing. I think you just saw the enemy heroes. Um, and you're on strength treads, which this looks a really dangerous position for you to be in. But I guess it's fine, because they just have snowball. I, I really would have pressured this if I were you. You have to be worried about the snowball and the call, I guess. Eh, maybe it is dangerous, but... I don't know, again, you still don't have a teleport scroll, and that's ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous. Plus, you have your ultimate up. You're not sure. Okay, that guy was really bad at casting spells, so... Looks like Dazzle's gonna save you. Well, he can just chop right through it, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, that was a pretty, pretty big mistake. You basically blinked forward just to do damage to the creep wave. And you actually had Vision of Tusk during that. If you blinked forward like that, I think you should've just gone all in and ulti the... The Ancient Apparition, because you could have killed him there. You also could have Screamed there. The Scream would have guaranteed that this Axe died over here, I think. Axe definitely would have died with the Scream with him. Well, it looks like he's still going to die, but... There's no reason not to cast Scream first, because it's an instant cast time spell. It looked like you spun around or trying to cast a Shadow Strike. I think that's the wrong thing. You can Scream a Pain and instantly after do the Shadow Strike. So you messed up quite a few times there. You blinked aggressively just to harass the A. Like, you shouldn't ever go aggressive on the A unless you're ready to kill him. Because if you ever blink aggressively, he's just going to cold feed you and get you down to half HP. That consistently happens. So you're definitely misusing blink. You're not utilizing blink in the way that you need to. You need to use blink when your opponents are in danger or when you're massively in danger. You can't use it just to casually come forward and harass. You use it to kill or you use it to escape. So you're kind of playing, the way that you're playing Queen of Pain right now is basically playing Queen of Pain like you have some nukes. And what's the point of blinking up here? There's really none. You don't have a sentry ward or anything like that, so you're not even checking for a ward. Maybe it's just a mistake, maybe you blink to the mid lane, not sure, but you're basically playing Queen of Pain like a hero that has a lot of nukes. You're not playing her like a hero that has a blink. A blink. You need to abuse her like a hero that has a free blink. It's one skill point and it lets you put yourself anywhere. Your armor's decent, not amazing. Your HP's good because you built decent items and you have a lot of nuke damage and you need to abuse that. You could easily have like six kills and zero deaths right now in this game against these kind of players. But you're not quite fortified. using, you're using blink incorrectly Radiant's consistently. Is under this is a good dagger target. That's good, because it'll slow him down. You could go after the Omni out here. I would blink dodge the, I would have blink dodged in place that ultimate maybe, but bottling is probably fine. You're gonna spot an axe, attack him right away. There you go. But you should have attacked him earlier and daggered him most likely. Uh, you didn't have dagger, that's fine then. But there's a lot of heroes here, and this is where things get kind of stupid. I know at the, these MMRs, it's like the range where everybody basically says, oh, we need to group up if there are heroes, and that's kind of good. But the issue is that you guys are all grouping up, and you don't even know if there's going to be a fight for sure. Like, yeah, you saw a lot of heroes around. Oh, I'm going to have to resume to make this work. So you basically all TP do a lane, and you can't see anybody, and you don't know how many are there. But if you look at the map, there's nobody else on the map. This is something that happens right at the point where people start teamworking, but they don't realize that they're teamworking a little bit in a bad way. 
Like, you guys can fight and stuff, but Clock is way back here. He's out of position. If Clock was maybe, like, here, this would be a great fight. But him being back here is kind of scary. So we'll see how this goes. You're kind of just walking forward here. You find an axe. You find a couple heroes. Time to panic. You look quite dead. Okay, you get the blink off. That's good. So now you got to look at the rest of the fight. And you got to see where should I go. And I would wrap around. And I would try to re-engage after with my bottle. This looks like a great ult target. Okay, good. Perfect. Alright, you did that well. But you got too scared and you blinked away. You could have blinked aggressively. And then you could have been in experience range on the Tusk. So you messed that up. You lost a little bit of golden experience there. I know you're scared about the axe and all. But you're way too scared. So now you died a few times. You're starting to really get freaked out about everybody. Ulti was good. Put some low. Scream. You're not really at the point where he's just going to blow you up. Axe, you have to be at 250. So I guess he'd have to call you for a duel. I don't know. I could criticize you there watching it. But I'm sure it was scary playing. So you guys have a good team fight. Everything goes well. Um, I, don't, I think it was still a dangerous fight because you didn't really know how many people were going to be there. I would have nuked that wave as well to kill a little bit faster. Got a haste rune now. Oh, that was a huge waste. I don't agree with you using the haste rune just to farm. You basically use it to run to the mid lane. Yeah, it's going to get you an orchid slightly faster, but you could save that for up to two minutes and use it in a team fight. I think that would have been way better. In the meantime, your team just kind of gets wrecked on the bot lane. I feel like when a... Uh, this is something that your team messed up on, but I'll criticize it. When you win a big team fight like that, you generally shouldn't continue pushing, because you're probably missing ultimates, mana, and generally a little bit of HP, and they will eventually defend it. I guess you get a denied tower out of it, but I don't think that's going to be Like right here, that's that's basically what you should be doing. Scream very often, use your AoEs to get a last hit. It's not very difficult. And it's something you really need to do consistently. So you've almost got your Orchid, now you're shifting to the top lane because what, there's a creep wave here? That's a mistake. You can see four heroes bottom. What you should be doing is not farming. You should be farming while you pressure a building. This is your first major mistake this game, other than not carrying TPs. I think this is the biggest mistake you've made thus far. Other than, like, your deaths, I guess. Because this is a very obvious map read. You saw four heroes bottom. The only one that's really threatening is Tusk, because he has a snowball. He can close the gap. You also have Axe, who can blink if he has a blink. But he doesn't have a blink. He could buy one soon. But you saw a lot of those heroes. Let's go back and see exactly how many heroes we could see. Okay. You see four heroes 100%. That means the only hero that could have been mid right now is Axe. And he could have had a blink. And hypothetically he could have blink called into an A ult. But with four heroes showing here, I don't think that's something you need to be worried about. Especially because your HP is decently high. If you strength treads, you're sitting at about 850. Something like that. So yeah, Axe could have been there. But you basically just used your haste rune to run mid. To run halfway top. To get a creep wave. There's a creep wave right here. And there was a tower that if you just would have killed this creep wave instantly, and you would have been right clicking while your creep wave was previously hitting this tower, this tower could be down to 600 HP or something like that. So you messed up pretty severely here because you didn't read the map right. And this is really important. If you see a lot of heroes pushing and you feel like you're not going to defend, if you know that your team is not going to defend, you always push a lane and pressure a tower. Always, always, always. Especially as a hero, a core hero like Queen of Pain. So yeah, you got all these last hits and that's great and all, but you really needed to be mid to pressure mid. You could have gotten four creeps here. This tower could be low, and then also, this creep over to continue pushing in, and one of your carries could have TP'd to the top lane and farmed it, for example. Or Earthshaker could have gone to the top lane and farmed it. Because this is a much safer place on the map than this is right here. And you were already there, so you might as well have pushed it. So now this tower is going to be harder to push later in the game, and that's a huge that issue. Is that's actually one thing you can do if you're getting really wrecked is, as a mid-hero. If your opponent leaves his mid lane, you just push the crap out of the mid lane, and you kill it fast, and then that means that there's this giant like gap. Basically, any if a fight happens anywhere in the mid lane, it's just bad for their team. Because the closest TP location is here, and that's like a 20 second um, resupply or defend each other. Whereas this is like a 10 second resupply. It's a huge difference. There's like a statistic that says if whoever loses their, if you lose your tower before 10 minutes, you have like a huge chance to lose the game. And it's mostly because of TP support. This is almost an Orchid. And again, these are things that you should have been building. You basically bought, you bought double robe, which is fine. I think that's the right way to build it usually. But then you bought a double Sage's Mask, it seems like. Like, you basically should have at least a staff of, or an orc, an Oblivion staff. I like that you held your ult there. That was, I think that was good. Alright, you guys should be able to kill him. No, you ran away. You're fine then. This is okay. A little bit of a bad blink. You should aim down here, most likely. 
So you basically have everything but your orchid, and now you're TPing in the bot lane. Looks like you're gonna try to. I don't. I don't. I have, honestly I have no idea why you're going down here. This is a complete waste of a TP, and it's making you really inefficient. Like your issues as a player, you kind of you pretty much know how to play the hero. You know how to cast your spells decently. You need a lot of work on your blink, I think, and when to blink and how to blink. But your other spells you're good at. You're fine with that. You know how to last hit pretty darn good, much better than your MMR, as we can see by the numbers here. But you're not quite farming perfectly. You're at like, I would say, 80% efficiency or something. You could get an extra 20% gold and farm out of your hero. And you could have done that while pressuring this tower. Because you basically, remember your pattern? You grabbed a haste here. You ran to the mid lane. Oops, let's turn this up. You ran to the mid lane. You got like one creep wave. And then you ran to the top wa wave. You got like two creep waves. And then you killed an Omni Knight with help from allies. Like, that was good that you were top to pressure the Omni Knight, but as soon as that was done, you blinked back, and then you said, I'm going to TP to the bot lane, the tier 2. Sniper was clearly dead, and you should have realized that. Just by looking. And if you're here, and you're TPing to the tier 2, and you realize halfway through that you're late, you probably should have just stayed, honestly. Because you actually could have maybe pressured this lane, or you could have walked to the mid lane instead. Because now that you're down here, you've wasted 100 gold, you still don't have your Orchid. At first when you started TPing, I was like, he's going to go buy his, his Oblivion staffs to increase his damage and stuff. But no, you weren't doing that either. It's just, you've been accomplishing good things, but at half efficiency. And your farm has been at 70-80% efficiency. So you could be doing all of those things at 100% efficiency and getting like insanely more farm. Like you're having a really good game relatively. And it's 16 minutes, you still don't have your Orchid. And that's kind of unacceptable. Well, you're going to have it like right now. But you really should have had it like two minutes ago. You easily could have two, three, four minutes ago. And then every time you see AI on the map, you just you just kill him. It's really simple. Kill him every single time. Every time you see Amina on the map, you kill him solo. Blink Orchid, he dies. Boom. Tusk, easy kill. If he can't snowball, he's dead. You know, there's so many things that you could do to accelerate your game. If you're just a little bit more efficient. And it basically comes down to not having teleport scrolls. TPing inefficiently, and you're wasting runes as well. You could use this double damage to extra, to like, really, you could kill anybody. You could kill Axe with this, for example. You should have grabbed this DD, and you should have maybe, like, smoked with one of your supports, shifted it into their jungle, find a hero, and kill him. Your support may die because they have blink daggers, and you'd be in the middle of their jungle, but, you know, not a big deal. So now you're just kind of standing around. And this is one of those things that happens a lot at lower MMRs. You see two or three of their heroes, so you're like, well, we need to go stand mid because they're all standing mid. That's not true at all. Because you're wasting your time right now. You're just sit you're standing around here and you're saying, like, oh, I don't have I don't have bottle charges, all my team is mid, we're waiting for initiation. Like, I guess you guys could initiate because you have a clockwork, and that's kind of cool. But in reality, what should be happening is you guys should all spread out and go farm somewhere else. One of you could farm the jungle. Uh, like Huskar, for example. He's doing ancients right now, which is cool. Um I feel like Clockwork and you should go pressure top. Rather than pat, uh, you basically have more of a ganking team than you do have a farming team. So I would go pressure top. You don't necessarily want a team fight. I think it's a little scary against AA, Axe, Sniper, Omni. If the fight ends up being a little bit weird, you guys could definitely lose the fight. Now Tusk isn't there, but he does have a TP scroll and you can check that. So basically they're ready to 5v5, and so are you guys. But neither, you're basically trading a farm right now. Actually, you're getting less, because Sniper's getting last hits here. Tusk is getting last hits here, and the only person farming on your team is Huskar until the creep wave comes up. So what should have happened right now is you shouldn't have even like let's let's go back like 30 seconds and see what should have been different. So you killed the creep wave, you popped your DD, you ran to the jungle, you killed the centaur camp. That's cool, but well, all you got out of this is a centaur camp. If you did what I asked, it would have been you and a su support smoking. Obviously, this is partially on the support to grab the smoke and make you and to move with you. But you guys should have ran to the top lane. And you could have just like. Or you could just walk to the top lane and have your support sit behind you. Like, Earthshaker sitting behind you means that you can pretty much kill anybody and not die to anyone. You, Clockwork, Earthshaker, go sit top. Dazzle, Huskar, stay together. Defend mid, for example. You guys go top. Quap pushes the lane. Once the creep waves are gone, the other two heroes hide in the jungle. You're pressuring the top lane. Huskar's defending the mid lane. Then you guys start get, you get into a favorable position. Right now, you guys are at a stalemate. You're at a 100% stalemate. And it's not accomplishing very much. So boom, you get a couple more last hits, that's fine and all, you're getting farmed, they're doing stupid stuff now too. But honestly, they should have engaged on you here in my opinion. Now you're actually out of HP. Like, it's like a bunch of shitty plays going on right now, basically. It, I, I don't even think you should be getting this much value. Because if they basically do an A ult with an Axe Call, you just die. 
plus one of the new like uh, purifier or something. This tower would be dead right now, by the way, if you did that 200 damage earlier in the game. Looks like it's still gonna it's gonna get denied. So I guess you finally kill the tower, so now you can do all this aggressive stuff. But again, you're still farming than everyone else at your MMR level. I think that was the wrong time to blink. Actually, you could, if he would have called on you, I think you could have uh, killed him. I guess on intros, your your HP would have been low, but. Like, you could have had backup there, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. You had uh, Dazzle, and you had Urshaker right here. You easily could have killed him. But I guess you were probably scared, because you didn't necessarily know where all the opponents are. So maybe that's why. That's more reading. Again, you grabbed a rune, you didn't use it for anything. Now your guys are walking into their jungle, which they clearly have Observer Wards, which is very possible. This is by far one of the worst ways to run, and actually it's probably the worst that you could have done. A better way to run would have even been through the mid and then go up this way, like straight up this way. If you run through the river and you walk past this point, basically almost every single observer ward in this area is going to spot you. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. They all spot you, basically. Either way, it wasn't a smart way to run. Look, you go to the jungle, nobody's there. I wonder why that is. Where should you guys be right now? You should all five be right here. If all five of you are right here instead, then you just push the tower. It's like, oh, they're not here? That's fine, we'll push the tower. But instead, what happens is you guys are going to run through the jungle and you're going to be inefficient about it because you're not going to find anybody. Like, sure, if they run through and they put Observer Wards down right now, it's pretty efficient, but your supports didn't have them, so this movement that you guys just did 30 seconds for didn't actually accomplish anything. And it would have made a lot more sense to do that smoked. If you did a smoked, you would have killed an Omni or something, and then you definitely would have taken the top tower. Or you just could have shut up top with five and taken the tower. It's like Tusk is dying somewhere. Oh, he almost died to Husker. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Found an X. That's good. It's a nice hook by the clock. Now they're TPing to defend. I'm oh, that's Omni I'm leaving. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Seems like the Earth Shaker will die. Your time has Looks like you're just hitting the tower, that's good. I think that was a good move. These guys are all tanky enough where it's kind of hard to fight. I, I actually can't believe EA doesn't have Chilling Touch, he really should have it. Especially with a sniper. Alright, let me replay that. that so basically, it looks like your team's about to get initiated on. Good ult, really good ult. I like that a lot. Oh, that guy's still gonna die, and it looks like the fight was... Well... What about Omni Knight? Alright, you should be able to make this guy pay for this. Oh, you should have died there. Okay, you still died. But he could have had the Ice Shards for the Husker. I think you, I think you made the right play there. I think that was good. I guess you really have an arm up by now. I think that's alright. I don't think you. I think your team fight there was really good. Looks like you're buying a BKB next. Um, yeah, I think BKB is alright because they have a decent, a couple. They have a couple good ways to close the gap, and they have a lot of nuke damage. I think a BKB is alright. Tread switch there. I think you've been tread switching a lot, but you missed that one. I guess it doesn't matter as much because you have an orchid and stuff, but. You could have blinked, uh, maybe ran to here and blinked here. Don't know if you're tread switching. Definitely need a tread switch. You could have more mana right now. Especially when you're playing Queen of Pain. You don't have unlimited mana, even though it feels like it when you have Orchid. At this point, I like your positioning, your hiding. I would maybe move up a little bit, and I would ask your your supports really should have an observer ward in this area, or maybe like right here or something. That would be good. This is good. Oh, you got wrecked. I let me let me relook at that and see if that was a good for it. Omni Knight. You could have gone earlier there. You waited like a second. That was one of the issues. Like, I would have gone... I think the moment of vulnerability was right here. Right there. Orchid Fissure. He dies. Where's is the Fissure in range? Oh, he's actually out of range. But he should. you should have gone on him earlier. 
And this guy should ulti. I think Wow, he built a Reaver. I don't like that at all. You basically let him get way too far before your dagger. And because you missed that opportunity, then you compensated for that by blinking aggressively. And I think that was too dangerous. And then they just cast their spells. Oh, nice. He, he repelled the Huskar. Huskar, attack you, idiot. Looks like your Earthshaker is going to save the game. Save this fight. Looks like your team kind of compensated, but... Also helped that the uh, Omni repelled the Huskar. So you look on the map, you TP to the top lane. I think that's all right. This is really stupid. Your team shouldn't be doing this. Still farming much better than everybody else in the game, which is good. That's mostly because they're just bad at farming. Like, you're decent at farming, you're not bad. But the game is kind of weird, it's going to hurt. Weird. I guess it's alright against a lot of nuke damage. But he should still make, make an armlet. I guess you don't want to make an armlet against A, is probably what he's thinking. A definitely counters him pretty hard. Alright, your position is a little bit too far back, I would have sat here. Now you guys are kind of threatening a tower again. A medallion on your team would have been really nice too. Do you have Huskar or some extra armor? Link dodge this. Yeah, be a little late. Dark light. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Let's see what else. Yeah, you guys aren't really in a position to siege, and honestly, you guys are pushing too much. Your items, if you buy an Orchid, the Orchid is good because it allows you to get solo kills. And what's pro the problem is that you're forcing your team, and your team is forcing the game into a place where you're looking for 5v5 engagements, where you guys are all going to group up, and you're all going to go mid and push, basically. And when you do that, it forces all of their heroes to be in one place. So you're 5-manning, which is forcing them to 5-man to defend. Instead, what could happen is you guys could play more of a split push game. I mean, maybe it's dangerous to do that because... Again, you guys have ganking heroes and teamfight heroes. You don't really have passive farming heroes, but I feel like if you just push all of the lanes, for example, then they have to go defend them individually, and that's when you start getting some really good solo kills. Maybe that's dangerous because they have good catch and stuff, but I feel like you're not getting ma massive value out of your hero this game. Like, yeah, again, you're farming much better than your opponents, but your opponents are frankly farming awful, and your carry kind of is as well. So it's not like, uh, again, I, I don't feel like you're necessarily stomping because of the items you have. I think you did have to go Orchid because of the Omni, but I feel like it just doesn't quite match up with this game perfectly. The BKB is definitely good though, I like that. This is really well done by them. Nice mech there. Turtle. Okay, that was good, I like that a lot. Should have daggered this guy. That was a really good initiation by them. The mech from your Dazzle saved you big time. Middle tower is under attack. The BKB didn't save you, but it was definitely nice. Dyer's middle really good initiation by them. Dyer's middle tower now you guys just kind of went heart, Radiant's and uh, I guess you'll just have a attack. really tanky Huskar. Dyer's structures are fortified. Um, yeah, backing's probably safe. Alright, so now you should basically, should basically shift to farming. And what you should have done just now... Rather than sprinting all the way to the top ring to refill a bottle that was maybe not even empty. Alright, your bottle's empty. What you should have probably done is farmed camp, camp, camp. Eh, I guess if you get there, you can get a double rune. But I feel like your team didn't get uh, farm efficiently on the way through. Let's see if Huskar does it. But somebody should farm their jungle on the way through, because otherwise you guys are spending all this time running across all of this ground and you're not farming on the way. You're basically leaving the safety or their side of the map to go farm on your side of the map. And you didn't even wait for the second rune, by the way. Could have gotten two bounties here. Now, Hoskar's going to farm one of them. But I would have liked it if your team farmed through on the way to the top lane. I think that would have been a bit better. A little more efficient. Looks like you killed this creep wave. Um, which is fine. But again, double bounty rune. Looks like somebody else got it. Clockwork got the other one. 
Oh, it looks like you guys both have bottles. I maybe did that on purpose. But. But look at the net worth, I feel like, yeah, you're actually pretty close. You have way more last hits in your, than everybody else in the game, but I feel like you really could have more more farm than this. That's good. Dyer's top tower see if I can see if he does not. Found a tusk. Really good ult. Good. Snowball's coming on you. Okay. I think you did that fight pretty well. Um, only thing you maybe did wrong was popped an early BKB. Like you got you got really scared there. Either way, you still used your BKB properly. Got a melee range. You orchided the correct guy. That was good. I think he did this fight completely fine. And then pressure the tower, which is good. And yeah, this guy can definitely take the damage. You guys ran away because they respawned, which makes sense. Again. If you went straight for the rune spot instead of farming, you could have gotten like two or three creep waves there on the way to the rune spot. So you're inefficient with that, and then you run a little bit south, and now you're running up to the left. You're basically not you're not running correctly in the paths that you're choosing to take. You could be more efficient. You could use the courier to buy your plate mail there, for example. Like you actually let's let's count how much time you just wasted, and you do this all the time. Pretty much throughout the entire game you do this. Okay. Starting at 311. Let's see when the next time you collect gold is. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance Bound you're in, bottom I guess. Tower is under attack. 311, 311, 311, boom, 358. You spent 45, 49 seconds not getting last hits when you could have gotten last hits while you did that. You basically nuked a wave mid. You spent 40 seconds to get a bounty in, to buy a plate mail, and then to come back mid and kill a creep. Completely inefficient. You could have left the top lane, killed this creep wave, killed this creep wave, killed this creep wave, got the bounty in, had the courier flying to get your plate mail, delivered the plate mail while you get the bounty in, then you shift mid and get a creep wave. You could have done that all in the exact same amount of time probably. If not, uh, maybe a little longer, but I would rather spend a minute killing three neutral camps and a creep wave than I would spend 40 seconds killing one creep wave and getting a bounty in. Like it is a, it's a hugely different amount of resource income and that is literally what you're wasting time on you're spending all this time blinking from tree camp obviously this is a mistake and whatever but if you're running to the bot lane to push to catch up with the farm you know what you could have done instead could have killed the creeper if you're like oh i'm gonna go push bottom let's go push bottom and you blink like and you're like oh i'm gonna go push bot well what you should have done is you should have just blinked here screamed this creep wave gotten yourself like 60 gold and then moved onto the bot lane i mean yeah yeah this is this is these are silly mistakes and whatever but but you could have killed the small camp on the way to this wave and still gotten all the creeps, maybe one less, and gotten more experience out of it. But you didn't. So you're getting a lot of inefficiency loss there. That's the biggest thing that's messing you up about your farming right now. You're not taking the easy camps on the way to your destinations, and it's decreasing your overall gold gain. That's why you have less items than I feel you should have. You're 10, 4, four and 7, you should have your second item, your third item completed by now. You should have a Shiva's or an AC by now. That's where a lot of players lose their efficiency, and they don't realize it. They say like, oh, I've got all these last hits, I did one well my lane, I'm getting kills over my opponents. Well, you're not getting as many items as you should have. If you had your AC right now, you could just super easily kill like Omni Knight or something like that. Oh, this looks like a good ult. Good holding on your ult, that was good. Ulti it, ulti it, ulti it. Why are you waiting? Whoa, why didn't you ulti that? What was going on? You really should ulti that. As soon as the snowball ended, basically. It was good that you held it, because... The snowball pr protected it. But right here, you should ulti. Boom, hit three heroes. Easily. Bit of a mistake there. I mean, you got the sniper. Alright, it looks like it's going to be useful, but that should have gone a lot better. Orchided him as well. The armor of a 
should be the top lane, which I think is fine because you're pretty low when you get the farm. Didn't get the tower, unfortunately, but oh well. This is good, you're going for the Nukumal wave. Nukumal method. And this will give you an AC. Honestly, I, I think I might have liked the 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 Shivas more than the AC, but I'm not sure. I know players like S4 really like an AC. AC is good for Huskar, I guess. Because this guy keeps buying only strength items for some stupid reason. And no armor items, so he's actually not that survivable. Pretty sure you're not, yeah, you're still mid. That's why these items are so bad, because they do fucking nothing. He has like terrible attack speed. He has like some lifesteal. There's no point to get a Helm of the Dominator and all this HP. You either get one or the other. They function the same basically. If he just got like a BKB or something with an armlet, he would have so much more damage. Like the heart was nice for CGing before, but it's time for him to get damage. It's too late now. This Reaver is is not what he needs. This guy needs like a I don't know, a moon shard or something. Might work. Double damage. You get a Daedalus. What's this? Oh, he's never I like these items actually, but they're kind of dangerous. So now you have AC, you're pushing. Missing some easy last hits, you back off. I would have, rather than TPing here, I would have killed this creep wave, or this camp too. You don't really see where they are, but I think at the very least you could have taken the small camp before going mid. Because then you're, you're limiting your allies' resources as well. Like, even if you never end up TPing mid to farm this, you're just you're basically just farming spaces that your allies could farm. So, yeah, you're getting farm faster than your allies, but that's partially because you're cutting their abilities for resources. What I really like to do when I'm playing a hero that's really far ahead is I like to sit in their jungle and I farm this camp, and I farm this camp, and then I push the wave. And then I when when these respawn, I farm them again. And maybe I run over here to farm. And if ideally, you'd have like an observer ward here or here or something so that you could see if somebody was passive farming, so you could just kill them. But you would at very least, I mean, you'd moderately increase your resources and your allies would actually get a lot as well. Maybe you don't really need that this game because you're a stronger core than a Clockwork or a Dazzle or an Earthshaker, for example. But I, th I just think you're not, you're not going, you're not picking the right camps to farm to, I believe. It's making you very safe, I guess, and you're not dying. That part's cool, but you could be getting more value, I think. Your tech speed's really good. Orchid AC, I guess. Oh, yeah, don't Poor guy. Oh, that's good. Okay, that still kind of hit everybody. I liked your delayed BKB, that was good. Should have daggered this guy. Oh yeah, you easily could have killed him. I would have doped that. It's only an A in a in a non -unit. You just had to blink dagger him, and you would have killed him. I guess he has eels and stuff. But that was a good dodge. But you have an orchid, you know. You could have gotten him. Oh, I hate this build. So bad. Way too strength heavy. I think you should have been more willing to do stuff like this too by yourself. I guess there's an Omni, but... Anyways, you get a Rax, that's all cool and all. Last hitting, Raxing, blah blah blah. And I think this is pretty much the end of the game. Oops. Let's see what you do in this fight. Oh, I got that so easy. Always dagger to slow him. So now he gets away for free. I'm pretty sure that is the end of the game. And again, back to four. three. And a BOT to pad your items. I understand that very well. Um, Necro three at this stage, I wouldn't agree with actually. I think your team is lacking a little bit of disable. I would have said the better item to build definitely would have been. Um, 
You could kind of justify a Diffusal Blade, but I, it's probably not the right choice. Because you could remove Repel and stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but ideally, you should probably make either Ags or a Shivas. Shivas would allow you to slow your opponent's super. You could basically just blink on top of Omni Knight and A, and Dagger and Shivas them, and then they're super slowed, and you could actually just right-click them to death. I think you just need a little bit of utility, or a Hex is an option, depending. Basically, Hex, Shivas, or Ags would have been the better choice, more than Necro 3, even though Necro 3 lets you push. So... Your main issues as a player is that you're not farming efficiently, you're not stopping on the way to places to farm, and in the early game you needed a TP scroll and you never had one, and you didn't quite farm efficiently enough. You wasted too much time walking around, and you weren't also at rune spots at the right time. So those are your major... They're not like giant problems, like yeah, you played a really good game, and I think, from, from what I know of 3.8k players, I think you're playing better than a 3.8k player, so I think you'll be leveling up if you continue to play like this, but you could easily play better. And the things that I just pointed out are basically the difference between where you're at currently and putting you up to like a, I don't know, like a 4.8k player or something like that. Like you still have some last hitting issues and like a good player is going to stomp on you. Um, also, you, you weren't using your mana correctly in lane. You were wasted, You had bad blinks and you weren't harassing well enough with your mana. So there's a, there's a couple things that you really need to work on to push yourself into the 4k mark. But as a whole, you did all right. You Well... As a whole, you did very good for your MMR for this 3.8k game. Obviously, an A isn't a standard hero, and he didn't have typical mid items, and he, but he could have played that a billion times better. I think it's possible to outlane a Queen of Pain with an A. I don't think it's impossible by any means. Because you have decent... Eh... Nah, there's, there's ways Quap could absolutely stomp on an A, but I think A would be alright, personally. So... Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, that's Queen of Pain 3.8k solo. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another one of these probably, or maybe a replay commentary. We'll see. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.